So today I'm going to go through how to set up a synced object toggle between players so that I can turn an object on or off and that event can actually show up for everyone else and even happen accurately for people who are joining your instance later after, say, you've opened a door and someone comes in, they need to get the information that that door is open already. So I just have a short hallway with some barrels and a door right here. And the door is just a cube that we will be turning off and on with this button right here. So of course, the first thing that we need to set up is the object toggle script on it. So I'm just going to go into my folder right here, do create VRChat Udon, Udon graph program asset, and I'm going to call this synced toggle. Then I'm just going to go to my button, add component Udon behavior, and then drag that into the slot. And of course, disable allow ownership transfer on collision because it's horribly broken and you should never use it. Let's open up the graph and get to work. So I did a tutorial a while back on a basic object toggle, and we're going to start out with essentially copying that script, which has a target game object variable in the inspector that we drop something into. So I'll make a new variable of type game object, rename it to be target. Then in the dropdown, I'm going to select public so you can access it in the inspector and just drag door into that slot. Since we want to have this happen on interact, I'm going to do space interact and get the interact event. Just going to drag out from my target variable and do set active so that we can tell it to be true or false. And we want this to be the inverse of what it is when we're calling this event. So we'll get its current state, so active self. And we'll just use unary negation to flip that Boolean value, unary negation. This is all in my original tutorial for object toggling as well, and this is the entire script that you use for that. However, there's one thing that you'll notice. The interact event only happens locally. If I press the button, no one else knows that I have pressed this button. So I'm the only one who is calling all of these nodes here. To fix that though, we have a function called send custom network event, which I will make a note for up here send custom network event right here. Now basically, when something calls this node, it will call this event, let's call this toggle target. Then if there's a event by the name of toggle target on your script, it will tell everyone to actually call that event. And since we want that to happen when we click interact, we'll actually just replug this node up here so that it goes into that. We of course need to actually make the toggle target event. So I'll do search event custom, and we could just name this whatever we want. And I'll just copy toggle target from here, paste that there, and then connect this in. So now this event tells everyone to run this event right here. So if I just exit full screen mode and hit play, we'll use SignMU to test this out here in Unity. Now, of course, SignMU is only one instance, so it doesn't actually show the syncing between players, but you'll see that the function still works whenever I press this button here. Now, the problem again is, let's say I launch my game up and I have toggled this door. However, someone else might come in after I've already opened the door and they won't have that most recent information. So when someone presses the button to flip the door's value, their value of the door is going to be permanently reversed from everyone else. And I'll show you what I mean here. This is something that we can get around, but it is a problem that is a little bit weird to actually explain right away. So if I just walk up and click the button, you'll see the, the door opens up in game and I'll come across over here. But if I open up my other game right here, you'll see the door is not open for this user. Yeah. So it is closed, but when I press the button, it does send the event to the other player. Uh, so we actually have the synced event. You see that we're both looking at it from the same side and it's just flipping. So this is something that we have to take care of and is commonly referred to as late to joiner syncing. We can just go back to our graph and open it up and we need to set up a little bit more complex logic in order to handle this accurately. So going through the steps that we want to happen, when a new player joins the world, we want to have someone check the current value of the door and then tell them, hey, open or close the door. So we're just going to run this in onPlayerJoin, which is an event VRChat gives us. So we can do 
on player joined. And this will fire once for every person that joins the instance. Now, since we only want one person handling this event, and theoretically the person that's been there the longest and knows what the door is correctly, we'll be checking to see if the local player is the master. The master is just the term used for the player that has been there the longest and defaults to being the owner of any synced objects. That's not too necessary right now. Really, what we're just handling here is that only one person is making this check. So we'll just search for networking is master. So this checks to see if the local player is the master. And we just drag out from here to get a branch, plug that in. And if it's true, we handle our stuff over here. So now we want to see if our door is presently active. So we'll just drag out from target and do get active self. And we'll branch from that as well. Now, so if we are the master, we check if the object is active or if it is not active. Now, if it is not active, we need to shut it off. If it is active, we need to turn it on for the new player. And if it's not active, we need to shut it off for the new player. So we'll just get two more send custom network events. So send custom network events right here. And I'll just call this toggle target true and plug this one into true. And I'll just paste a, another version of this, plug this in there and call this one false. Now I need two events that are actually named those things and act accordingly. So I'll just search for custom event and name this toggle target true. And then over here, I'll just copy the set active nodes and bring them over here, plug all that in. And if it's true, we want to check this so that it sets the object to be true. And if it's not true, we'll have this one over here be false and unchecked right there. So there we go. This is the entire script that we need for toggling objects on and off for everyone in the world and making sure that it's accurate for people that are joining the instance later. So I can actually boot up the same test earlier that I did. So I can hit build and test with two clients and I will have one toggle the door before the other one joins the instance. All right, now that we're loaded in, I'll open this door, walk through it. And then we'll load in with the second client and make sure that they have the accurate door state. And there we go. We have an open door that toggles correctly for both players. There's a little bit of delay when I press the button, but that's because the action has to ping off the servers and then come back to the other players. So there we go. That is an accurate door toggle in the graph. We're going to go through how to do this in Udon Sharp as well now, which I'll spend a little bit less time explaining why I'm doing things since I already explained it in the graph, and more or less just go through how you convert the graph into the syntax of a C Sharp script. So I'll actually just turn off the graph button since we don't need that on anymore and enable the one that I have for the Udon Sharp script. Here I'll just go to create U Sharp script and do synced toggle sharp just to distinguish it as a file and now i'll let it recompile everything now that there's a new script in our project and then i will click on the button and over here since this is a c sharp script technically we can actually search for it so i'll search for synced toggle and you see it shows up right here click that and then hit convert to udon behavior and of course disable allow ownership transfer on collision now we need to double click the c sharp asset in order to actually start editing our script so I'll double click it here in the inspector, but you can also double click it over here in your project window as well. To compare everything between the graph, I'm actually gonna open up the graph here as well and have that open in the background. So first we need our public game object variable. So we'll do public game object target. And we'll actually just save now and go back into the inspector so we can put that door into the correct slot before we forget. Just drop that in there and we can full screen our graph again, and head back into uh, Visual Studio. So we need our custom event toggle target, but we need that after the interact event. So there's two ways of making events in Udon Sharp, one for your custom events and normal C Sharp events, and another for doing VRChat events specifically. So if we wanna have VRChat's interact event, we need to do public override, 
because we're overriding VRChat's event essentially. And here we can search interact and that autofills. We do not need the base interact script, so we can just clear that value. And we're just going to do a send custom network event to all for toggle target. So send custom network event and then parentheses. Uh, now, unfortunately, by default, selecting all as it is right here is a little bit of a, a pain because it's uh, VRC Udon common interfaces network event target dot all. And then we can just call our string event toggle target and end that line. Now, if you don't want to type all this out every time, you want to have a network event target, you can actually copy this section right here and go up to the top and say using and then paste that so that it accesses this namespace in our script. Then we can just delete this and then we can reference it as network event target all at any point. So now we actually need to make our toggle target event. Now, if we're doing send custom network event and trying to call that on everyone's computers, our event needs to be public. So we'll do public void toggle target and parentheses and brackets. And in here, we'll actually just do target.set active, parentheses, the opposite of target.active self. And again, this was, this was from my original tutorial on object toggling. So if you want more information on that, you can just watch through that video again. But this is really all that you need because the exclamation point flips the value and is the unary negation element of this. So this handles the normal syncing, but now we need to sync it for our players that join in later. So let's set up these events we have over here. So on player join, so that's a VRChat event. So we'll just go up here and do public override on player joined. And then we can get rid of base on player joined. And we can say if networking dot is master and then curly brackets. So that's the first branch here. Now we wanna see if the object is active or inactive. So if target.active self, now we could say if target.active self equals true, but we actually don't need to put that. We can just say target.active self and it defaults to checking that value being true or false. Then in curly brackets, we'll just do send custom network event to network event target dot all comma toggle target true. And if it's not active, so else curly brackets, send custom network event to network event target dot all toggle target false. And that line, and I'll actually just drop else down a little bit so it's even. Now we actually need to set up those events. So we can go down here and do public void toggle target true and just do target dot set active true then to make a second one we can just select the whole thing control d to duplicate and then i'll just change this to false and false and there we go that is our entire script for synced object toggling so we can head back into unity and unfull screen our graph since we're no longer using it. Since we have our door and the target value here, we can actually just boot up and test that as well. While this is launching, one of the reasons it's taken me so long to do this tutorial is namely because I've actually been hoping for the Udon networking update to actually come out, which uh, it's in public beta now, but I still can't recommend building something on a beta version because you can't show it off to your friends. It's great to check out how betas work and everything and what features they're adding. But if you're working on an active project that needs like has a release date, you need to keep it on the live build. So I'll just load in with the right instance here and then toggle the door open and walk through. And then we're going to have my left one load in as well and it should all be synced correctly. Should being the operable word here. There we go, perfect. Everything works perfect and is synced between players. Now, there you go. That is the synced object toggle uh, tutorial that I uh, threatened I would do months ago and just uh, 
uh, well, now I did it. <laughs> and that's what matters. <laughs> all right. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all around.